Hi, it is Thursday, July the 9th, 2020, and our devotion this day begins with a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at the 20th verse. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Greeks. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing the things that are, so that one might not boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, that the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our devotion today comes from Ms. Amy Peterson, who writes, Some things just don't make sense until you experience them. For example, when I was pregnant with my first child, she writes, I read multiple books about childhood childbirth, and I listened to dozens of women tell their stories of labor and delivery. But I still couldn't really imagine what the experience would be like. What my body was going to do seemed impossible. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians that birth into God's kingdom, the salvation that God offers us through Christ, seems equally incomprehensible to those who haven't experienced it. It sounds like foolishness to say that salvation could come through a crucifixion, a death marked by weakness, defeat, and humiliation. Yet this foolishness was the salvation that Paul preached. It wasn't what anyone would have imagined salvation would be like. Some people thought that salvation would come through strong political leaders or a miraculous sign. Others thought that their own academic or philosophical achievements would be their salvation. But God surprised everyone by bringing salvation in a way that would only make sense to those who believed, to those who experienced it. God took something shameful and weak, the death of God's Son on the cross, and made it the foundation of wisdom and power. God does the unimaginable. God chooses the weak and foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God's surprising, confounding ways are always the best ways. Let us pray. O oh God, we read in the prophet Isaiah, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Blessed are you, O God, for your divine wisdom, which puts to shame all human wisdom. Amen.